Okay, ground fault protection of equipment are devices that detect the imbalance of current between the circuit conductors. It's, it sounds like a GFCI, and it sounds like a special purpose GFCI with the technology that we've learned that is true. And it goes on that during normal operation, the current returning to the power source through the ground fault protection of equipment is equal to the current leaving the power source. Now, before I get into this graphic, let me see if I can just kind of say something. Ground fault protection of equipment is not intended to protect people from electric shock. Right. As it says, ground fault protection of equipment. There are a lot of code rules that get involved with this. Some of them have to do with services. That's going to be Article 230.95. Yep. Some of them have to do with, with services, which is the, the utility power coming in. Won't get into details. Uh, some of them have to do with feeders. We have feeders, and these are systems that are 277, 480 volts, where the equipment is rated 1,000 amperes or more for services and feeders is going to be 215. Mario, what's that rule on feeders? That's going to be 215.10. 215.10, if you have a feeder 277, 480, 1,000 amperes or more, this is, it requires ground fault protection of equipment. Snow melting equipment requires ground fault protection of equipment. Heat tracing cable requires ground fault protection of equipment. Marinas, which we're going to talk about here, requires ground fault protection of equipment. So now, ground fault protection of equipment is just like a GFCI. Current goes out, current comes back, there's a CT, it senses the end balance. However, the time that that device is going to respond is going to be different than a GFCI. And the magnitude, in other words, the numbers, we were talking smaller amperes in GFCIs and special purpose GFCIs. Ground fault protection of equipment at the service and feeders at 277, 480, or 1,000 amperes. And the setting could be like somewhere, I think it was like 200 amperes, and it's a big deal. All I want you to do is understand that there's another type of protective device that's protecting equipment and not people. Now, the setting of that, that imbalance, um, there is no standard to setting in, in general. Uh, there are some rules on, on in Article 23095. Uh, when we get into marinas, there are some rules there. So the concept is just like it is. I wish I had a better picture. Uh, well, let's take a look at this graphic right here. Here's for marinas. Um, here is a marina. This is power. Uh, power. Marine power pedestal. Marine power outlet. Okay, thank you. Marine power outlet. Similar to like an RV. You know, kind of out. And in this, you lift the cover up, Brian. Tell me what we have here. By the way, this is equipment protection only. Well, that's kind of cool. I, never, I didn't even notice that. And it says equipment protection only. Okay, so this is the ground fault protection. Functions like a GFCI technology. So, Brian, tell, tell me what. We have a 30 amp. So you got a single pole 30, 120 volt on the left side. Right here. And you've got a two pole 50, uh, 240 volt on the right hand side. And it's basically, you know, your smaller boats are going to be just having a battery charger or something of that nature. That's going to probably use the 30, or the 30 amp 120 volt. And then the bigger one is going to be some of your bigger boats have air conditioners and all kind of other things on them that need power. Okay. I don't want to make it complicated. The National Dakota in Article 555 has requirements for marina receptacles. And what it's going to say, it has to be protected with a ground fault protection of equipment device set at not more than 30 milliampers. GFCIs, remember, five plus or minus one. Uh, special purpose GFCIs, there's no really number that we're aware of. And then in marinas, not only do you have to provide protection of the receptacles, but the wires that go supply these uh, marina power outlets, also those, they're called feeders, they have to be protected, and those protections are set no. at 100 milliampers. I'm not giving you the code references of those in 555 because there's a dramatic change between the 1720 and the 23 code, so there's no way to give you numbers that can be valid. I just want you to know there is a device called ground fault protection of equipment, and I give you a couple code sections you can take a look at. Just no more than that's what I want to do. You okay with that, guys? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep.